to Neil, like I got to start right off the bat by just saying congratulations on your success uh, since last I've seen you not only in Canada, but honestly, the success in the US is something that all Canadians are always proud when we see a Canadian do so well, we're like, that's our girl. Oh, thank you so much. I mean, it's, it's hard for me to even like comprehend some of the stuff that's happening right now. It's just been like, such a crazy year and all that. Um, but I've somehow walked out with so many things to be thankful for. So I'm really excited. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, but you again, you have so many great fans and you're really interactive with them as well. And that's why that song is continuing to climb up the charts because they want to hear it more and more. So, uh, you you know, uh, again, your hard work that's paid off with just how busy you are. I mean, I'm sure you'd prefer to be on the road, but you're doing so much of this with your fans and and giving them access uh, to your life and what's going on and your writing and everything. So again, I mean, the proof is just kind of in the pudding as to why you're there. So you should be really proud of yourself. Thank you so much. I mean, the fans have been so incredible over the last year. You know, we haven't been able to get out there and be on the road at all. You know, I really haven't even been able to play somebody like that um, on the road. So it's it's pretty crazy that it's it's still climbing. And the fans have just been amazing. You know, they've showed up to every like, zoom performance and every uh instagram live and all of that stuff so uh i just feel really lucky that i have fans that are just sticking it out they're waiting for concerts to come back and they're so great well even like that lyric video where you asked for photos uh, clearly you've got too many of them because you're still posting tons of them <laughs> we are we got so many uh so many people sent in like amazing photos and there were just like I think we got one of everybody in there, but it was like, yeah, we, we just wanted to keep posting the extras because there were so many great ones that I'm just like, yeah, I just want to keep sharing them. <laughs> so some of the other things that I've spotted that you've done for your fans, I mean, recently, I, I guess, sorry, we should talk about the new single first because this is a good segue. So Give It To Me Straight is out now. And this is another great single that uh, we are so excited to play in uh, Canadian country radio for sure. Thank you. I mean, this is kind of the first song of, of all the new music. So I'm very excited. It was all written over Zoom over the last year. So, and recorded over Zoom, actually, we, we were able to, I mean, I did my vocals in studio, but everything else was like sent to uh, musicians across Canada and the US and they were playing on it in their home studios. So we had to get really creative with this new music. And I, I'm just more proud of it than anything. So this is this is the start and <laughs> can't wait for more. Well, and that's the thing that I know this is a new process for so many people. But uh, what I love about it is like you can't tell like the production on this is amazing. It's a, such a great song. Thank you. Um, yeah, Dave, I wrote this with Dave Pittenger and Allison Belts Cruz and Allison was also on um, somebody like that. So I absolutely love working with her and uh, this was one of those special songs that came out of Zoom and I had the idea the night before our writing session and as soon as I saw their faces I was like these are the people I need to write this song with and I mean anybody who's who's been broken up with has had that feeling of like not getting closure not you know having so many questions walking away from the conversation and I think you know it's very like female empowerment to be like no you got to give me a reason for this you can't just like break my heart and get away with it you know. <laughs> I love it. So, um, and then, and I love the lines too, but it doesn't matter how much um, sugar is on that rim. Yeah. <laughs> you can't sweeten this up either. So just tell me like, right. I know. I mean, that's, that's the whole thing. And it was uh, really fun to put together like the, the alcohol references with, with the actual like conversation thing that was really fun to put together. And I mentioned um, Jack Daniels, I say Jack D whiskey and they like sent me Jack Daniels. They were like, this is so great. So I'm like, I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well then no offense to Jack D, but what's your favorite, like, what's your go-to? Are you a wine person, a tequila? I do love wine. I drink a lot of red wine. Um, I don't really have like a specific kind. I just like trying them all. Um, and then I do love tequila. That was, I actually met my boyfriend because of tequila. So I have to say <laughs> tequila is good. <laughs> all right. Well then the next song. Yeah. I'm sure there's a love story in there with tequila and uh, we'll, oh, yeah. you'll get all kinds of bottles of tequila your way. So right. <laughs> you know how this works now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's so great though, too, that they already heard the song and decided to send you that. So that shows that the song is already making waves as well. Thank you. I mean, booze included. I'll take right. the bonus, right? Yeah, I will take it. <laughs> but what I was going to say too, is I've seen that you've been handwriting all these lyrics out over and over and over again. 
Uh, my bulldog's gonna throw a fit in five seconds here. <laughs> Working from home. Yeah, I know. Um, but you've been handwriting these lyrics over and over and over again for your fans. And yeah. I'm wondering how many have you done so far? Do you still have use of your hand? Are you okay? <laughs> I do. I've only done five of them so far, but yeah, we're going to keep doing um, some giveaways with those. So if people want to check it out on my socials, I, I like, I like to do that. I think it's like kind of a, a different little um, keepsake of your favorite artist. So um, yeah, I, I love writing those out and then people get to see the lyrics as well. So I'm excited about that. Well, yeah, not that you really would forget the lyrics, but you never will now. Like there's it's just <laughs> impossible, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm like singing it in my head as I write it out. I'm like, okay, I got this now. <laughs> But this is what I love. You're very crafty. Was it, I know, I don't want to get it wrong because I know you have many guitars and you like to name them after birds, but I feel like it was Flamingo that you decorated with the, like you bedazzled. I did. Yeah. Over quarantine. We named her Flamingo. Um, I put like almost 9,000 crystals on <laughs> and they were Swarovski crystals. I don't, I like literally made a huge error, a huge mistake thinking like, oh, it's only going to take like you know, maybe a thousand, it won't be that much. And then once I got started, I was like, oh, dang, I am in for it now. <laughs> yeah. That was a passion project. I watched that because you had updates like daily. And I remember thinking, oh, I cannot wait to talk to her about whether or not she wants to bedazzle everything or never, ever again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I ended up doing a fan guitar, uh, a giveaway on TikTok and like that one, I was a little smarter. I used different crystals. I got them a little bit bigger than the ones that I used on, on my guitar. But uh, yeah, still a long process. Like you get started and it's like every single individual crystal. Like I, I think I'm slightly insane, but yeah. it turned out okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, but it could be also a method of meditation, right? Like you're so it's true. focused. Yep. I mean, I, I pour a glass of wine, I put on the office and I just bedazzle away. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, I love it. Uh, is The Office your favorite show? Is that one that you leaned on throughout quarantine? Oh, yeah. I, I love The Office. I love Friends. I like I like just rewatching things, especially when I'm like working or whatever. You know, I like to just have something on in the background that's familiar. Uh, but also during quarantine, I watched Game of Thrones for the first time, which I did not expect to like that show. I was totally against it. My boyfriend's like, you have to try it. And then I was hooked and then I was obsessed with Jon Snow and yeah, I'll never go back now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that is, that's the way that one goes. My husband has still not watched it yet, but I know that if I get him into it, but oh yeah, yep. but we also had some office binges. We've watched it a thousand times. So yep. <laughs> um, the, the dinner at Jan's house is my favorite episode. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. Uh, <laughs> what is it? Uh, what's the candle company? Um, oh, yeah. Something by Jan. Yeah, yeah. I can't. <laughs> best yeah it's just the best episode they're just so awkward and I love watching them all cringe it's so great yeah. <laughs> good times um also I, again you have been so busy through this which is so great um recently playing at the Opry was that the third time you've done that it was the third time yeah well it was actually so I played I played my debut at the Opry then I played Opry at the Ryman so this was my first time like back on the actual Opry stage uh, since my debut. And I've got to say the nerves came back just as strong as the first time I was, it was like, you get back in that moment and you're like, oh my gosh, this is happening again. Like I, I'm feeling all of the nerves and, and all of the excitement that I felt the first time. So it was so great. But like, I mean, as soon as you get onto that stage and step into the circle, it's like the nerves disappear. It's like it, it, that stage has magic. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been lucky enough to sit on that stage and like I think I think I watched some of the acts through the tears that were falling out of my eyes. There's it's yeah. something very special. So I can't imagine being able to perform on the stage. So congratulations on that again. Thank you. Yeah. And just being able to get out there and of all places be like, yeah, just got an Opry show. All good. I know. I'm like, I'm collecting like all of my little Opry posters and I've got like a whole thing hanging up back here because like it's so cool. Like, I don't know how to, it's just history and it's so cool to be a part of it. I have a whole bunch of hatch print posters that I still have to get in frames in this new place. I'm just like, oh. but they're all rolled up and they're ready to go. I'm like, I just gotta, gotta get to Michael's. <laughs> yes, I know Michael's. That's where, it, that's where it's at. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> um, so a couple kind of just random questions I wanted to ask you because we haven't had a chance to catch up in so long. First of all, I was curious uh, growing up if you had uh, any other bands that you performed with or you were in before you were a solo act? 
I have pretty much always been a solo act, um, but I did my first like experience in Nashville. I was actually in a duo and a lot of people like don't know that, but um, it was kind of like Maddie and Tay right before Maddie and Tay came out. And uh, it was really cool. I mean, we were signed and everything. It was, it was happening, but just like creatively wasn't quite right. So we uh, went our separate ways and, and I continued solo. So yeah, that's really my only experience being in uh, you know, a band or a duo or whatever, but, um, yeah, kudos to people that can do that. <laughs> did you go with just your names or did you have a fun name as a duo? Um, no, we were, we were just our names. It was okay. just the, the yeah, the two, kind of just like Maddie and Tay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we've all talked about how cool your name is. And I remember that was one of the first things that you were like, yes, my parents really named me this. Yes, this is my real name. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> if you've got that name, you're not going to change it. So that uh, makes perfect sense. Thank you. <laughs> uh, one of the other questions I've been asking people is uh, when this is all over and the first big bash happens, whether it's out at the bar or it's at somebody's house and the karaoke machine rolls out, what's your go-to karaoke song? I am like, this is, this is it for me. Like anytime I sing karaoke, it has to be goodbye Earl, the chicks. That's it. <laughs> yes. And the chorus, I'm sure everybody joins in. Oh yeah. Like I actually went downtown like way before the pandemic. Uh, actually the night I met my boyfriend, I went and sang karaoke after that. And, uh, we sang it was me and my two other girlfriends so we were like straight up like the chicks and uh sang the entire song and it felt so good i can't wait to get back to that <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um uh, again i'm sure there's all kinds of other things that i wanted to talk to you about but uh, i'm sure you've got a hundred of these today so thank you so much for your time and again just congratulations on all the success and uh everything that's going on in your world. You're very deserving. And we're so proud of you here in Canada. Oh, thank you so much. I hope next time we do one of these, I can come and see you in person and give you a big hug once this pandemic is over. Yeah. Shots on me, girl. Let's do this. Uh, I love it. Let's go. <laughs> Maybe I'll just get some more Jack Daniels and bring it up to you. Yeah, sure. That works. <laughs> okay. Thank awesome. you so much again for your time. And uh, just genuinely, you should be so proud of everything you're doing. So congrats. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.